off crow. Oh my god, I actually stopped crowing. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we start, I'd like to quickly thank all the people from the UNSW Reddit for all their support on my exam recap video. I see all you guys commenting and upvoting, so I really appreciate all the support. If you're new and you haven't subscribed yet, please do help out the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks, let's get into it. Today's flavor is rating every single computer science course I took at uni, putting them on a tier list. I should quickly mention that these ratings definitely are dependent on when you take the course, uh, who your lecturers are, the sort of assignments they're gonna set. That really affects uh, how much you enjoy the course. So this is gonna be a bit subjective. And also keep in mind that I'm now a back-end engineer. So if you're more of a front-ender or a system admin or someone with slightly different interests, you might find some other courses better than I did or worse than I did. If I don't mention a course, it's because I didn't take it. And I'm also not gonna be rating maths courses that you have to take at UNSW as part of a computer science degree. Quickly, the categories I'm gonna be using to rate the courses are enjoyment and relevance to the workforce. Yeah. This one's just bad. It. Ugh. Everyone knows this ethics course is bad um, and it's almost difficult to put into words why it's bad, but I'll give it a go. In the computer science stream, there's only about two weeks of content for it. Uh, you learn about ethical theorists and then the laws that affect intellectual property, which are already managed by the legal team at almost every IT company you'll go and work at. The weekly seminars don't require the tutor to do anything. They just sit there and wait for the students to sort of repeat each other's points because there's not really enough lecture content for each student to uh, get participation while still uh, raising unique arguments. So people end up repeating themselves and it just feels super, super tedious and like very, very frustrating to sit there for two hours. Also, uh, like eight of the weeks out of 10 or something are student run seminars. So the tutor literally just sits there grading you the whole time. Uh, and the whole course really feels like they've tried to make the staff not have to do any work, but still be paid and you know treated as if they are uni staff. So that's definitely going in the F tier. The first controversial one, maybe, in your opinion. Uh, the reason why this is so low for me is because the satisfaction you get from this course is completely dependent on the group you end up getting. I mean, yeah, you're building a project, so the potential to enjoy it is really cool if you have a good group and you build something cool. But you also might have to stand up an entire app by yourself. Uh, so there's no consistency and there's no way that the course tries to enforce consistency across all the groups. Also, when I took it, every project except for one required AI and AI isn't a prerequisite course. So like 90% of the groups did one project. My little conspiracy about this course is that they had so much AI when I took it because they wanted students to build the tools that the uni wanted to use so that they could get the tools for free. So yeah, the computer science project is also going in the F tier. Web application security was actually the most disappointing course of my entire degree. And I feel bad for saying that, but it's true. And I'm gonna be honest. It's not the worst course I took, but it's the most disappointing. The gap between my expectations for the course and what it actually delivered Definitely the biggest of all the courses at UNSW that I took. The lecturing was not good. It turned into a pattern of introducing a concept, not really going into technical explanations about why things worked, and then recommending tools that automated all these attacks, but then saying that the school infrastructure that you can practice on, you're not allowed to use the automated tools on. So you end up in this like purgatory of, I don't have enough technical knowledge to write these attacks from scratch myself unless I do heaps of research. And I'm also not allowed to practice using the industry tools on the course infrastructure. So you don't really get any practical skills or understanding of the techniques in enough detail to really apply them yourselves without extra effort, a lot of extra effort. Also what made this really disappointing was because you could go on and see previous years of lectures and they were really good. They had technical explanations. So you could see how much the course had fallen in just like the space of a year or two years. So I kind of think this course is relying on its past reputation to generate more students for it in the future and seriously should revamp the quality of explanations and lecturers so it can be good again. 
Algos and programming techniques, this is like the interview course. You learn all the popular algorithms that'll get you through your leap code and hacker rank, practice questions. The reason why this is so low is because it was the first time when I took it that UNSW was using trimesters and the course as a result felt super, super rushed. That's not really uh, a fault of the course itself. No one really knew how courses were gonna react when we introduced trimesters, but at the end of the day, it still affected how much I enjoyed this course. It's still a very relevant course. You need to learn popular algorithms to pass coding interview questions, but I just didn't really enjoy it. So that's why it's going in the D tier for me. Oh man, this course was just such a mixed bag. The staff would be the first to admit that the organization of the course was really bad. Uh, the content on the course website was split into weeks and those weeks barely ever actually aligned with what was being taught in both the seminars and the lectures. So it felt super disorganized. The project is fun. It's called the Something Awesome Project where you essentially have free reign to do some security based research project. So if you pick something you're interested in, that can be really enjoyable. I've also heard that the course has changed a lot since I finished and now the structure is a lot more uh, clear and linear. And so if you take it now, you'll probably have a much better experience than the one I had and you'll probably enjoy the course a lot more. Uh, uh, software engineering fundamentals. This course is almost impossible to rate because it has changed so much so frequently over the past three years. I've taken it as a student and I've also come back and tutored it repeatedly over the years since then. And the content in it was almost like completely different. The course at the moment tries to juggle a lot of different topics. There's version control with learning Git and GitHub. There's Python programming, building web applications with the group project, and then also like a smattering of other subjects that sort of just fill in the gaps. When I took it, there was a lot more focus on design. We did class diagrams, ER diagrams, and a lot of data modeling. That sort of stuff has been pushed back to the object-oriented design course and the databases course. In terms of enjoyment, I had a good tutor and I also had a really good group for the group project. That's why I think my rating is a C tier for this instead of a D tier because since I've come back and tutored, I can really see firsthand what happens to good students if they get stuck with really bad groups. It, it feels really unfair and you feel bad, but there's, I'm not really sure if there's a better way to enforce good groups. So as a result, some people can have bad luck and sort of suffer. In terms of relevance, uh, the most relevant stuff is definitely the version control. Learning Git and GitHub is crucial to working as a software engineer anywhere. And also you get to learn Python. So overall, it's a very mixed bag and also very hard to judge. So I've sort of just put it in the C tier. Let's say it's a C tier. Computer networks. I feel almost bad for putting this in a tier this low. You learn a lot. You really do learn a lot. And a lot of it is quite relevant. The reason why it's this low is because I've heard from my friends who have taken it in different semesters with different lecturers that it really, really depends on who your lecturer is as to how much quality and how much enjoyment you get out of the course. I had a good lecturer. He liked to bring in his dad jokes to the start of lectures and in the middle of lectures. And when you're in such a content heavy course like networks, you sort of cringe and laugh at the lecturer, but it's actually really effective at breaking up like the mundane nature of just getting smashed with more and more really like deep content. You learn about factors that affect network speed. You learn about packet loss, network configuration. I thought the labs were maybe a little bit overkill, especially in the early weeks where there's a huge theoretical component. And then also on top of that, um, standing up like a peer-to-peer -peer connection or something as part of the lab. I thought that was a lot to ask. Also, the assignment can be a bit of a mixed bag based on who is setting it. When I took it, the assignment was actually really good, but I can't ignore the fact that there are some people whose judgment I really trust who have said that when they had a lecture that was different to mine and a different assignment spec, the course was really not enjoyable. So that's why it's sitting in the C tier. Data structures and algorithms. This would be in the A tier if it wasn't for the fact that when I took it, the assignment was based on a game strategy. What I mean by that is you could understand the code and the data structures and implement stuff just as well as someone else. But if the strategy you chose for the game was for some reason less effective than theirs, you'd be marked lower. And so you could luck out 
or you could be really unlucky and your mark would be determined somewhat by that, which is something I really don't support. I really don't like the idea of setting up a game where all the students have to play against each other because you're not really assessing how well they code in that sense, which is what the course is actually supposed to be about. In terms of relevance though, it's a prerequisite for almost every third year and higher course for a reason. You'll learn stacks, queues, heaps, linked lists, pretty much every data structure that you need to get through the rest of the degree and get through the workforce somewhat competently. So it's exceptionally relevant. I would have given this an A rating or maybe even an S rating if it wasn't for the fact that the game-based assignment sort of like ruined my experience of it. Systems fundamentals. I have a soft spot for this course because it was kind of the first time where I was developing some proper confidence as a computer science student. In my first semester before I took this course, I felt like I was just barely hanging in there and I was like, what the hell is going on? But then in this course, I started to feel like I could actually wrestle with the degree. As you progress through this, you understand pointers and memory, a bit of operating systems, a bit of assembly language and some low level stuff, which is a back end that I really enjoy. The assignments were writing MIPS assembly code and also building a shell. And I really enjoyed building the shell with the system calls and the looping and everything. I felt like that was a really, really good assignment. I took this course when everyone roasted the lecturer in the experience survey. If you were one of the people who roasted Jas, you know who you are. I have a theory that there's a 90% chance you were one of those people whose parents cut the crust off their triangle shaped white bread sandwiches <laughs> because you're a snowflake. Jas is a legend and he should be protected at all costs. So enjoyment wise, it was really good. Relevant wise, it's good if you want to get into the lower level subjects as you progress through your degree. Um, and if you want to get into back end engineering, understanding that low level stuff can be really helpful. Yes, yes, this is controversial. Putting object oriented in a higher tier than data structures and algorithms. Keep in mind, I would have put data structures in the A tier if not for that assignment which I really didn't like. Whereas for this course the best part is the assignments. You learn good design principles, you learn Java which are both really good things to know if you want to get into software engineering. On top of that the second assignment is probably one of my favorite assignments that I took in all of my degree. You get to build a game, you sort of have a player who navigates through a dungeon trying to dodge enemies, picking up swords, moving boulders and sort of completing challenges. You build the levels, you set the goals for the levels. The most fun part of it is definitely the extensions you get to choose two extensions i chose to use a magic wand which you could then like shoot enemies with spells with and also teleportation so i had things that looked like walls but that were slightly faded and if you notice them you could walk through one and it had a twin and its twin is where you would appear on the map and that was really really fun to build so those assignments really boosted my ratings for this course relevant wise it depends i guess on what language you end up using in your job if you were writing java every day in your job you'd say this is super relevant. In my work, I usually write in Python or C, but the principles of abstraction and encapsulation are super critical to writing good code in almost any language. And Java is a pretty versatile language. I like it. Some people don't like Java, but I like Java. So yeah, that's why I would put this in the A tier. Ah, oh, security analysis. This course just gets A tier because it's so good. It's so much fun. It's literally just a group of mates trying to find bugs in code to then exploit the bugs in code so they can feel like hackers. It's one of the harder computing courses that UNSW offers. You really need to understand how memory works and how your operating system sort of is laid out so that you can pull off the exploitation techniques successfully. It's kind of a wild card subject. It doesn't really fit with any of the others. It's very attacker focused. You're looking at vulnerable code and you're trying to take advantage of it. It gets A tier because that sense of achievement every week where you're just struggling to get through your lab task because some tiny little thing is making your exploit not work and you can't pop a shell or you can't gain access to the remote computer and then suddenly after you know four days of tweaking you finally get it and it's almost like an adrenaline hit you're like oh I feel like charged up now. I feel amazing. I feel like a hacker, you know. It's the closest thing to feeling like you're in Mr. Robot, you know, or a TV show where you're just like smashing out hacks and it all clicks into place and it 
works and you feel great. If it was relevant to more engineering jobs, it would get S tier for me because it was definitely the most fun I had in a course, but you can't really justify giving it S tier because it's not that relevant unless you're going to become a hacker. Uh, introduction to programming. At the time I felt this course was like impossibly hard. I had no experience before I started uni with programming. When Andrew told me that pointers and arrays were the same thing, I almost crapped my pants. This course gets S tier on pure nostalgia alone. It's the very beginning of, you know, your journey as a computer scientist, if you've never coded before. Good course, you learn C. I mean, that's, that's what happens. You learn the C language, but based purely on the fact that it's the start of it all and that I've just graduated and I can see as well as you can see I've got my graduation goggles on. Yep, S tier for intro to programming. I only took databases because my coach at work at the time told me it was the most relevant course for being a good back-end engineer. I think that's maybe a touch of an exaggeration, but only because you have to learn how to program. If you assume that every engineer knows how to program, then yes, databases is definitely the most relevant course for back-end engineering. You learn SQL, you learn how to work with Postgres and a little bit of SQLite. When I took it, Jas was the lecturer. So like I said, he's the greatest and needs to be protected at all costs just because of the quality of educator he is. The queries, the Python integration with Postgres, the data modeling, the theory behind what makes an effective database design. All that stuff is just so relevant to being an engineer whose queries are you know, instantaneous as opposed to taking 12 minutes to get your user's data back to them after they make a request. So it gets S tier mainly for relevance, but I also really enjoyed the assignments. Writing queries, writing PL, PG, SQL functions, writing with psycho PG. Yeah, really, really interesting. Really, really important to know. Really good course, would recommend it. In fact, I didn't have to take this course. I had already met all the units of credit. I took it, like I said, because it was recommended and I'm really, really glad that I made the extra effort to take it. Extended Operating Systems is my favorite course of my entire degree. It gets S tier for me based purely on how much I enjoyed it. There were three main assignments, one where you implement locking and learn about concurrency to sort of prevent race conditions. The second one is handling system calls and delegating them to a virtual file system, which you'll learn about if you take the course. And the third one is implementing a basic memory manager. All those assignments are super, super interesting. Assignment two and three are a grind. You do them in pairs. I really loved all the low level stuff. I love writing C code since it was the first language I learned and you get so much control over what you're writing. I also loved Kevin, the lecturer. You could tell that he was teaching stuff that he was passionate about and it made a big difference because it inspired everyone else to really commit to learning this sort of difficult but really, really interesting sort of content. Enjoyment wise, it's up there with security analysis with my as my favorite course. Relevance wise, it's probably not the most relevant. You don't need it to be a software developer. That's why it's not compulsory. If you wanna be a developer, a lot of the stuff is abstracted for you by the language you're using, especially if you use something high level like Python or Java. So I took it mainly for interest and it was very interesting. If you wanted to be a system admin or an infrastructure engineer, then it would be very, very relevant. But yeah, it was super enjoyable and also a touch more relevant than security analysis, which is why it's getting S tier for me. So there we have it. A rating system for every comp course I took. If you have thoughts about this, let me know. Because like I said, a lot of these courses depend on the lecture you have and when you took it, which determines the assignments you do and stuff. And the enjoyment and relevance, I guess, is also determined by what sort of job you want to do after uni. So I'm really interested to get like the community's thoughts on which courses they thought were better than what I gave them and which courses were worse than the rating that I gave them. Again, please take a second to subscribe if you haven't yet. And thank you very much for watching. Bye.